Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Stream Geeks Live, the show where we talk about one thing and one thing only, live streaming. A high-definition broadcast brought to you by your hosts, the Stream Geeks, Paul Richards and Tess Protesto. Available via video on Facebook and YouTube Live. Plus, via audio on our podcast cast channels on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Stream Geeks, the tech geek source for the latest in live streaming and video production. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Stream Geeks. Hi, guys. I'm Tess Protesto. And I'm Paul Richards. We're happy to have you here. Happy to have you here. Today's all about cabling. Yes. Cabling, cabling, cabling. (laughs) Actually, a little bit inspired by Ken Richer from Richer Productions, who is going all IP and something we've kind of been hinting at a little bit here. And uh, one of the things we realized is you can save like pounds and pounds and pounds of weight, physical weight. I've got with the your giggles. video production, <laughs> Paul's setup. giving me the giggles live. I just Something to funny happened when the when the intro was. I won't <laughs> okay, even say why. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> All right, continue. So, what we wanted to do was kind of we built a calculator, which we're going to show. And we went out and we weighed all the major cables: HD, SDI, HDMI, Ethernet, in 100 foot lengths, and showed the really the how much they weigh and. The question the was, truth of the matter there. how much weight can we get rid of? How much can we just get out of our Eliminate. video production system? Because you've already got a tough job. Mm-hmm. It's already yeah. tough enough, especially when you're trying to also, sad to say, in some cases, eliminate people. You're trying to eliminate cameramen, so it's mm-hmm. harder to transport all of your equipment. Yes. Physically. Yeah, because you, you're going down to, it used to be maybe a five-person team. Maybe it's a one or mm-hmm. two or three-person team. So you've got less people, maybe a little bit more equipment, pan tilt, zoom cameras, control cables, stuff like that. But the cables themselves Like can't this problem be, over here? I mean, yeah, we've got a huge problem over here. For those of you on the podcast who can't see this, I'll try to explain. Oh, there is a pegboard that we've put a frame on, and we put all of our cables up here. Mm-hmm. But it's a mess, and all the cables are crazy. And it turns out they're actually really heavy. Not only that, they're very easy to lose, as we've found. If you've seen some of our live yes. shows, it's easy to lose cabling, and it's hard to keep That's track of them point. all at some points. So you're also needing to think about having backup cables. Mm-hmm. Backup cables. We've talked about some of that stuff. So if we can simplify everything down to an Ethernet cable, which is something we're going to talk about Ooh. today, for powering the cameras, mm-hmm. no longer need to power them, and getting power in remote locations can be difficult, to control the cables. Oh. Yeah. Pan tilt zoom control. Pan tilt zoom control. Audio. Audio and video. Mm-hmm. So that's all over one Ethernet cable. That's kind of the dream. That's what we're going to talk about today. And um, we had, and I'm just going to play, and, and me and Tess will kind of explain this. Yes. this system. Here's some ability. pictures from Ken Richer from R- Richer Productions. He used to use Sony cameras. He has like four or five Sony cameras set up here. And this is a, a, a basketball game, or maybe it's like an auditorium with a bunch of people. He often streams music performances, mm-hmm. and so we know that's what he's doing. And if you look at his switcher, he's got somewhere cables around upon 17, cables. 20, 50. Uh, cables. Just, um, just an immense amount of cables. Um, some of them are for power supplies. Some of them are for video. Those are HD, SDI. I see, like S- USB. USB XLRs, cables, XLRs, SDI. and he's just got these huge piles of cables, and he said they're the heaviest thing he has. Yes. This one picture that he's showing us right now, for those of you on the podcast, I mean, there is three giant, two-foot-thick cable piles. Yes. Wrapped, 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 I'm wrapped I'm sure that up. weighs as much as I do. And he was explaining how, so what he has to do is, because he's putting cameras out into the field, so maybe they're 100 feet away from his location. And what he does is he he bundles them. So he's got a video cable with a control cable with a power cable and he ties them all up so that when he's just got one long snake of cables that go out to the different cameras. Yeah. 
So, yeah, which was really cool to see in the uh, case study that he did for us last week. He showed us what's happening now that he does have the PTZ Optics cameras yes. and how he has extremely tightened up the amount of cables that he is using in his systems. Yeah, if I zoom forward just a little bit more, and he shows us some of the uh, some of his work uh, at the Michigan Music Conference and how he uses multiple cameras, and he's really proud of the way that he's able to, you know, be a one, one sometimes a one or a two person production, but mm -hmm. has still have multiple cameras and control over everything. And now here is his latest super easy setup, which is two PTZ Optics cameras two bundles of ethernet and a laptop and a laptop yep it doesn't get any simpler than that just about so that's the inspiration for what we're going to take you through today um it really kind of hit home with me uh and i think it might strike a chord with you guys if you know what i mean ha ha, ha, strike, ha a chord, strike a chord or two <laughs> let's lighten up your your, your load Monday. your wire load <laughs> lighten up the wire load and so let's just put it all all on the table. We've got a calculator. It's a free download at ptzoptics.com. It's really a guide, we'd like to call yes. it. It tells you the m exact um, weight of each, you know, standard size cords um, from SDI cables, Cat5 cables, HDMI, XLR, USB. We have Cat5 on here twice. Visca mm -hmm. Cascade and ZV9 cords. So uh, we went out and weighed them, and our, our goal was to figure out how much do these cables weigh applied in a real world situation we used the music festival that we recently did and um you know we we weighed usb we weighed xlr xlr and usb are some of the smaller ones we weighed cat five um we weighed and the heavy ones were we weighed 100 foot of db9 control visca control they're about four pounds per hundred feet Oof. hd sdi I and mean, you can just feel it in your when you hold them they're just heavy and then we weighed the cameras just as a as kind of a control there we weighed the cameras and we weighed the joystick controllers so the ip joystick the serial joystick and a, a 20x sdi camera so after weighing everything now and we weighed some hdmi cables too after weighing everything here are the results so the the th what we want to look at here, and all the results we'll post in a blog post uh, as soon as this is done. You're all going to be able to get the guide for free. The guide for free. At about 100 feet of SDI cable, we're roughly at 4 pounds. So when um, Ken there had his bundles, he would have an SDI cable, a control cable, which was the same, exactly the same as a SDI cable. So... Four pounds for a hundred foot feet, so that's eight pounds. And then he would do a power cable, which is just audio cable, not too heavy. We'll just write it off, but eight pounds for each camera that's going to be a hundred feet away. That's more than the camera. The camera, which I have um, here somewhere, I think the camera the is the, camera? the weight of the camera. Yeah, I weighed the camera. It was five five pounds. Five pounds. So the cables are more than the camera themselves. Wow. Then we looked at Cat5, which is roughly two pounds for 100 feet. Roughly. 2.4 is roughly what it is. So you're going to save two pounds roughly per 100 feet. And you don't need the control cable, so there's another four pounds. So you're going to save six pounds per system. That's a big deal. That's a lot. And then, and we're just talking weight here for those of you who are in the video production industry who know how heavy all of this stuff is and you have to bring it out somewhere back and forth so that's part of the deal with live streaming is being able to do it all yourself set up multiple cameras be able to sit down in one location and control the whole production on your own i can just picture somebody with a backpack a special backpack with protective cases for the cameras <laughs> just showing up to stream the event yeah. you know and then just your client saying what, how are you going to stream the event with this little amount of equipment? I actually remember that happening with the Sticks concert. Yeah. I like pulled out just like my focus right and my computer and they were like, this is going to make it happen. It's like, yeah. yeah. A lot of <laughs> software nowadays. Yeah. Um, and the great thing about this is, is that ethernet cables are going to save you money as well up front. They're less, it's less expensive. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some trade-offs. Hopefully, we'll get into it. Maybe we'll see some of the questions in the, in the chat. But I did a quick test of if we have four cameras with 100, k 100 feet each, we're looking at roughly 30 pounds of weight for SDI and serial and, and power. If we go to Ethernet, it's just 10 pounds. 
So we're saving 20 pounds. It's like That's having crazy. a toddler on your hip. Yeah. That you don't Seriously. have to carry around. So it, it really hit home for me. And Ken kind of... Because he's always carrying around toddlers. Always carrying around toddlers, which you know, drives me crazy. And uh, I was just like, if I can get rid of one of those toddlers, it would be amazing. So <laughs> that's what the show is going to be about home. today. It was really hitting home. And um, we have some fun, fun segments to go over today. The very first one is... Um, from our friends at Live Streaming Pros. Yeah, represent. Love me some Live Streaming Pros. They are headed to Vid Summit. They are participating in Daryl E's Vid Summit Video Conferencing Marketing uh, Conference. Video Marketing Conference. Keep getting tongue tied with that one. They are sharing their trip down there. They're driving there from Oregon, I think, where they're from. Yeah. From Washington. Or Oregon. So let's play the segment clip. All right, go ahead. And now it's time for our live video moment of the week. And here they are. They do these. These are these fun little selfie streams where that's Loria and she's going down with David. Oh, I have the playlist on. Sorry about that. They brought their pup. They've got their little, they brought their puppy to mm -hmm. Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. They must be doing an Airbnb or something, or maybe so, the hotel. Lab. So for our podcast peeps listening out there, you can see in the back of their, I guess it's a little Ford Rover they, they truck. They got it. They, or, they rented a van. That oh, they rented a van? That just shows you what you might need to haul equipment around. And it's full of equipment. They're bringing the live streaming um, it's like set up there. They have some of PTZ Optics cameras. Do they? So, because because I'm or shipping, I'm, I already shipped all the PTZ oh, optics cameras in for Vid Summit. Oh, you're PTZ optics cameras. Um, I, they're bringing, a, from at least what I know, three streaming computers running VMix. So they're gonna be using VMix. Yeah, and they're just chugging coffee like in the mountains. I mean, it's such a beautiful over there I on know, the west that coast. That drive must have been amazing. So they're out there doing that, and that that was our live segment of the week. But we also have a viral video of the week as well, which we're gonna show There's off. The pup. There's, oh, they did bring a little chihuahua. That's about to be Paul, except airplane style, as Paul's headed out there to help out with streaming yes. and to participate in a live streaming panel there, which I'm really excited for him for that. Yes, I will be at Vid Summit, and you'll see some cool stuff from sh on the Stream Geeks channel, kind of backstage on how to live stream a um, big conference. Yep. And one of the things we were talking about is the value of virtual tickets. And Tess is going to be back here with her virtual ticket to the conference. I'm so excited. You guys can still get a virtual ticket. I think they have a few left on BitSummit's website. If you want to watch Paul and Gary Vee and Luria and everybody Joel else. Com. There's so Joel many com. great people there. You can get access to the live show and the, the on-demand recordings. I believe because it's kind of like an exclusive conference, if you don't do that, you, it's not going to be published on YouTube, I guess. Yeah. It's, yeah we're also going to be talking about get, private streaming. Yes. Oh, yeah. You just said that. Virtual tickets. I'm hoping to get um, the, the part that I'm on. I'm, I am going to be on a panel with Loria and Joel Kahn and some other people. And I'm hoping that I can get the pieces of that video to use on our channel. But we'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> so um, we have a branding quote of the week. Since Gary is going to be at VidSummit, I had to pull out a Gary Vee quote. This Good week's idea. quote is, the brands that connect with people on a real level are the ones that will win. And that's what we're always that's striving great, to yeah. do, and which is one of the main purposes that brands choose to live stream. I think that totally hits on the live streaming um, play. I actually am going to be having lunch with Gary Vee. I actually won a lunch to Finally, to meet with, with all him. the giveaways we do. It's about <laughs> time you, you won something. I know. I, I Maybe I have good karma from all the giveaways. Maybe. Um, so I actually won a lunch to sit down with Gary Vaynerchuk, who is a investor in Meerkat. He was an early uh, angel investor in that live streaming company. So I think he understands the space. And if you guys have any questions that you want me to ask him when, when I have FaceTime with him in two days, let me know in the chat. But essentially, I want to ask about the live streaming industry. Mm -hmm. We've been finding these like l these large um, trends, like small but large, like for example, like streaming weddings. Like it doesn't seem like a huge business, but everyone, there's so many weddings going around all around the world. Yep. And it's incredible how much something small like that can really be like worldwide yeah. too. Yeah, our goal is to tap into those niche audiences markets and hopefully get some good feedback from gary on that so use live streaming to connect with your niche audiences and your target 
personas so that they can feel a relatable relationship with you so you guys can hang out we learn so much from our followers and audience yes. members they really help us improve on strategy and what we need to change about our products a lot of the times yes. and they're just so incredibly valuable yeah and i think that when you you get that feedback and it's not positive like it's great to get the positive feedback obviously but when you get the the, the hopefully the good and the bad, you know, the grain of salt. Um, when you, if you can keep track of those people that are asking for X, Y, and Z feature and then deliver on it, even if it takes you a year and you remember that it was that person that said, like I remember Rich Rubin from Mobile Studio Devices down in Tampa was saying how, and this is three or four years ago, before we could access the on-screen display menu on our PTZ Optics cameras remotely via IP, he was like, I can't really sell your product until you do that. And he was like, I love the product, I love the video, I love the control, but I can't, if I can't access the fine details of the menu from 1,000 feet away through the IP, I can't recommend it to my clients. And I said, it was a bummer because he was a big client, he had bought a bunch of cameras, mm -hmm. but he just wasn't that happy with without that one feature. And then I remember being able to call him like a year later and be like, Rich, we got it now. Like, I'm sorry it took so long, but it's there now. And now he's a great customer. Really? Yeah. And you got that feedback from one of our last I remember trades. it was from him because I remember seeing him at oh. a trade show and he just explaining it to me. He's like, because he all the good, all the good, but he was like, this one thing is like the rose and the thorn and I can't go forward with your products without that being fixed. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And that's just a perfect example of the kind of feedback and help that you can get through live streaming. Random tech fact. So here we go. Um, this one's obviously going to be about cabling. Let me play the segment. And now it's time for our random tech fact of the week. So I wanted to play a little random tech fact of the week here. Um, this one is all about cabling, obviously. Um, so. Ethernet, with it being so amazing, and just remember that 100 meters is the maximum distance for Ethernet. So 328 feet, 100 meters. So when we're talking about how you know we're getting away from SDI, just remember that SDI with 3G SDI, that's 1080p, 60 frames per second, can actually go roughly 600 feet. Now that number depends on the quality of the cabling. Maybe it's 800, maybe it's 400, depends on the quality of cable that you're buying. But it can go significantly farther than Ethernet and still maintain the high quality um, signal. So think about that. You know, Yes, it's very heavy. Of course, I couldn't even imagine how much a 600 pound. What's HDMI, or like 100 feet? HDMI, 100 feet is pushing it for it's HDMI. It's interesting that Usually they each 50. have their own certain distance and that's something that really needs to be considered because if sdi we said 100 feet is like four pounds so okay. if we had a 600 foot sdi it would be six times four 24 pounds 24 pound sdi cable just imagine that i mean jeez yep. <laughs> not good with numbers so i'm not just 24 pounds and that's <laughs> and then you still need tw a 24 well, pound four, visca cable to control the camera so 50 pounds of cable to get a 600 but it's the only way to do it unless you have ethernet switches and there's such thing you could put switches or you could put poe extenders blah 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 but that's the random tech fact of the week the maximum distances for cabling um and now we have a super tech tool of the week super tech tool and now it's time for the super tool of the week. Okay, and I've got the super tech tool right here. It is a POE switch. This one in particular I wanted to pull out from the, the vault, if you will. This is an Alinksys 8 port gigabit POE switch. And so I'm going to open it up and show this one off. Um, I have actually haven't even opened this yet, but I'm going to be using it at VidSummit most likely. Um, quick installation guide. The thing to remember about these PoE switches. So first of all, what is a PoE switch, Tess? Power over Ethernet switcher. So you can yes. connect your cameras and control them over the network. Yep. This is what makes all the Ethernet possible. So if we rotate it up like that, we can see here that we've got eight ports. And it looks like, I didn't realize this, but it looks like only four of them are PoE. Because when you look at a switch, let me go up a little higher. 
Let's see if it'll focus in. So see where it says PoE on that side, and then you're not seeing PoE on the other side? Dang it. I Remember podcast. Yep. Um, so for the podcast listeners, let me just try to explain this. They're, they're like Basically, there's a little underline on four of the ports that says power over Ethernet. And there's eight ports, so and only four of them are power over You can see that the other four doesn't have that. So you would still be able to connect uh, your cameras I and control them, that. but they would need to be plugged into power. Yes, exactly. Test is really, you're getting, you're really learning this stuff. So Thanks, bud. that's about it. The only other Our tip. videos really help. <laughs> it's like, if you haven't learned and you've been on this many videos, I, I would w be a little worried. But um, the other thing that just to, just to think about with these PoE switches, just remember they do require setup. And you know, a lot of times they come with the CD or a driver, and you can log into the actual device. Here, let me just stick this, that in there. Um, and you can set it up. So s what does a setting up a, a switch mean? Well, you can set it up for DHCP, meaning it can uh, send out IP addresses. You can um, log into the unit, and a lot of times these units have passwords. Um, so just a little, some things to know. Um, they, sometimes they don't work right outside the box. So just something to think about. Um, the next one is we have a viral video moment of the week, and this, this one's is really cool. Really cool. This is legit. This is legit. So let me play. Are they going to get audio from it? No. And finally, now it's time for the random viral video moment of the week. Okay. So what you're looking at here, and I'm actually going to show you this on the YouTube pages. This is a band called The Academic, and they have a song called Bear Claws. And what they were able to do was actually use a, in one take, which is kind of the cool part, this went viral on Facebook and YouTube, and they basically live streamed to Facebook. And the whole thing worked so well because they had a countdown clock um, that they would sync up with their band. So they were basically taking the audio from Facebook back into the room and allowing, actually using the delay on Facebook to like basically it's hard to explain. Can you try to explain it to us? Multiple live streams it would have to be right or did they just live stream and then use the recording to to start another stream well see there is no recording basically oh. there's a projector behind them okay that's projecting the facebook live so what feed. they're doing is recording themselves live on a camera with a giant projector screen behind them showing a their facebook live stream and since there's a lag what's just being displayed on the projector is about five to ten seconds behind what's being displayed in the recorded footage in front of the projector, and um, you are basically they're adding on a different instrument in real time with the recorded footage, you know, and then that instrument is being added into what you're seeing in the projector five to ten seconds later. You may have seen this uh, phenomenon happen when there is so cool. um, like you take a video of a, of a of a video and it like starts to mm -hmm. start to multiply and you see all the ones and as this video goes through it's almost as if like versions of themselves 10 minutes we in the past we should do this to we show an example figure out some type of we're going to do post this. an example of this on stream geeks soon. we've got to do this we can well, it's going to be a couple weeks because i'm going to we're la busy, tomorrow but yeah, but we'll do this so we we've can show got the to figure out how to do this show the viewers what we're talking about exactly such i'm sure the cool viewers thing. can see now and it's hard to explain it's hard to explain. Um, I think the people who viewed, uh, it's called the Academic Bear Call Live Looper version. And I have to say, it's one of the coolest little live stream hacks that I have ever seen. Really cool stuff. Really they really use really the cool. YouTube delay and they set. Wait, were they streaming on Facebook or YouTube? It was Facebook. I thought it was Facebook. Yeah, it was Facebook. Um, we're just showing it here on YouTube, um, just as an easy way to show it. But yeah. There, I, that is one of the most cool things I've seen in a long time. Yep, that's amazing. That has to do with live streaming. So um, I believe that actually f is our show today, guys. 
Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. We have a lot of questions waiting for us in the chat, so we can address them now. Thanks for watching today, guys. Head over to Facebook at Stream Geeks, Instagram at Stream Geeks to continue the fun with us. Cool, so we'll roll the credits then. And Go ahead. All right. Okay, cool. I'm still... <laughs> Stream the fun. Woohoo! All right. So that was a show. We kind of stayed on topic there, so we didn't get to a lot of questions, so we're going to jump right into those. Ted had an interesting comment I want to bring up first. Yeah. He says, today's HD SDI is quite a bit lighter than the cables used for color television cameras 50 years ago. Ah. Semi trucks were needed to haul cables for remotes. We have it much easier today. True. Uh, but, yeah, we're even. Point. We're trying to even cut it down more. I guess. I know. Isn't that but interesting? I have a video uh, clip I want to show, and I'll explain it for the podcast listeners. Um, I knew that that there was a major change happening in the industry, and so I took a quick little video. This is uh, we went and streamed a music festival, and you can see here we've got. All these cables, SDI, Ethernet, and Ted, you're right, you know, they're not that freaking heavy, you know, and it's uncompressed, 1080p60, 3G SDI video, and one extra control cable, and hey, I mean, that's how I started, that's how I learned how to live stream. Listen, I, your girl's pretty weak. <laughs> I, I, I might be struggling with that. Uh... Okay, Martin, Martin, excuse me, Martin says, wait, what, 600 feet with SDI? I got 200 feet with Belden at 1694 F fr frames at 1080, 59.94. Belden is one of the best for this kind of stuff. Um, Belden, there's different numbers out there. Um, if you Google it, I found that... Um, that someone uh, was claiming, I think it was Xtron was claiming 600 feet at um, 1080p, might have been 1080p 30. Um, is your 1080p 30 or 1080p 60? But yes, Belden is really, that. those are the cables that we actually support. Um, in fact, just for the, for the viewers, this is the one thing the podcast people aren't going to get, but here's just a, sh a shot of this real quick. There's the Belden SDI cable. It looks like a BNC. It looks like coax cable. It really is coax cable. That's what you would see. You'd plug into like your um, your modem, right? If you don't know if you ever saw that test, like your Verizon or, or Comcast modem that gives you internet access. Yes. And then everyone's seen this an Ethernet. Simple little Ethernet. Back. This is what you plug into Those your cable. And then we just brought an HDMI. Everyone's seen this. Does the Xbox controllers? have to be Xbox brand or can they be no brand? in fact I've had better luck with the ones that aren't Xbox brand to be completely honest 24 the volt wireless ones volt. are a little a little while, difficult yeah. uh, I would I would recommend the hardwired USB Xbox controllers for pan tilt zoom do the PTZ cameras work with POE you can answer that one Tess yes yes they do uh, we've had some questions about that um, roughly seven to nine volts are used. Hey, James. A lot of times, PoE switches will have a certain amount of voltage that they can output uh, reliably. And this is something that I need to learn a little bit more about. I don't really know everything about this, but mm -hmm. um, there is a s maximum length that you can go with PoE. I haven't actually, I can't claim to be an expert about that, but I know there's like voltage drops, and you can actually get a PoE booster that will boost, reboost the, the POE. Mm -hmm. the, it's a POE injector booster. Mm -hmm. But I don't know all the we limitations. We were going to try and, and do that at Sticks. Really? But their IP guy, IT guy said no. 
Yeah, they are very he tricky with it. the. It's like a, I don't know. We were trying to go like stuff. 300 feet or something. We we're about to go by those thingamajiggers to extend it, mm-hmm. so we could go further, but we did something different. Okay. okay, Martin says, "Are you guys using the Red Giant plugins to create your video animations to intru- introduce your capsules?" Oh, the episode segments. No, we use Adobe After Effects. We go out and buy a Adobe After Effects template. We put some music to it, and then we hire our voiceover guy to to create those voiceover segments. And they're just little MP4 clips. At one day, one day, hopefully soon, we're redoing our studio. All of the segments will actually have a home on this little X keys. But we have actually done quite a bit to this X keys to make it work for us. In fact, we forgot our Facebook Live reaction question, which we'll go ahead and ask now. Mobile versus installed streaming systems what, what do you have do you have a mobile system what or do you, you need because if you're if you have an installed system and it's permanently installed mm-hmm. you don't need to care so much about the weight of the cables they're in the walls they're done right, it's a one-time thing um so maybe sdi still is the best option and here you know running 25 50 foot sdi cables are not even that expensive yeah so heart for mobile ha-ha. and then haha for video production and we already just got in, haha for installed video production but I wanted to show this little X keys button for those of you on the vlog it's a little USB keypad that you can just has programmable buttons and we we figured out the trick to these things by the way which I would like to just share that knowledge because it saved us a lot of time we have multiple shows yes so we've got one for Wednesdays we've got one for Fridays we've got one for Mondays and it was becoming a big pain in the butt because every time we used our X keys we had to program them and that took five or ten minutes to do and it was really annoying each new inputs on each new show so what we did was we figured out that in vmix this is a vmix particular thing um all the inputs have to be exactly the same in every single show so camera one is input one camera two is input two and you know number eight is their number nine is the intro video number ten is one for facebook reaction overlays and so on and so forth so as long as those all match up no matter what show you're in the keys don't need to be reprogrammed That took so much time to figure out. But so it's those little tiny hacks that I hope we can help you guys with. It saves so much time for our setup, just knowing that the keys are going to work no matter which show we have. Yeah. Mike was asking about private content delivery networks. Besides ah. the cast, I, mm-hmm. I did mention Stream Monkey. Stream Monkey is one that I've met. Um, I like going to the shows, the trade shows, and see that there's a lot of them. And I like to see the ones that actually make it to the trade shows because they clearly have like a real business pitch. And Stream Monkey was a cool one. Mm-hmm. The cast we still default to because it's just our, our comfortable it's one that we've, reliable we've used a so lot. Far good pricing still stream monkeys i think is probably the best and then there's also another one out there that has been found to be really cheap and really good and i think i think it's called big beluga never heard of it or something beluga beluga cdn i can't remember off the top of my head but they were super cheap Mm -hmm. and someone was showing it on tom sinclair's show because you need a cdn to stream your content to roku and that's something that we want to do you know it's one of those things like on the checklist of a million but we want to do roku one of these days and big beluga ended up being a good way to do that firmware upgrade to control your cameras with an xbox controller through vmix no yeah. No, you just need to have the vMix that supports we'll PTZ with control. The PTZ PTZ control over Ethernet, and that's all yes. I needed. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's like the last thing with NDI is that they're going to have NDI is going to be interesting because like all of these different solutions offer these different things. One Drake's of already things doing that preset rule with his X keys. Oh yes. For sports. So Drake knows. Why yep. didn't you share that with us before we figured it out? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, nothing like a hundred foot of internet cable. Yeah. So it looks like we've got a couple people on the mobile. We'll take the Facebook uh, reaction question down. Mm-hmm. Becca, lower third. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's fun. Um, a lot of good questions. It's been a good one a good today. Answers. Thank um, you guys. NDI will have the NDI cameras will be compatible with the NDI Studio Monitor, and that Studio Monitor is a free app that can be put on any Windows computer. And you're supposed to be able to plug in an Xbox USB joystick to it 
film with no programming needed and PTZ any camera, any NDI camera. That's what's supposed to happen. So that should be good. Sounds good to me. Yeah, that should be really fun. <laughs> I think that covers everything for today with our people. All right. Thanks so much for joining, everybody. And listening. And listening on the podcast. Take care, everybody.